Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today I thought we'd talk about Melee, Mercado Libra, Fiverr and Block after they've all reported earnings this week and just give my quick reaction thoughts to these companies that have reported earnings and since I own them all, I thought it'd be very good to update you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Now just a quick little plug. This is the last Friday video so I'll see you on Monday unless you are on the Patreon. You can join through the link in the description. It's only £5 a month and over the weekend, I will be posting a full breakdown of the earnings from a lot of companies that reported this week. And as well as that, I will be doing a stock request on Airtel Africa. So if you do want to see two more exclusive videos from me this week, join through the Patreon with the link in the description. If not, I'll see you on Monday. First of all, it wasn't on this list, but DraftKings having a cracking day today, up 4%. It seems like DraftKings is starting to get the love back in after its drop off earnings, which I don't think it should have had. It was a cracking set of earnings. And it seems like a few of the analysts are coming out and this week they've been backing up the stock saying, hey, it's uh, it's doing very well and they've been hiking up the price target and uh, it's good to see, it deserves it. It's performed absolutely amazing this year and it's good to see from a year ago where nobody liked this stock, nobody talked positive about this stock apart from one guy that filmed in front of a whiteboard with a very strong Yorkshire accent and um, was the only guy that was positive on the whole internet about this stock. But we are, and, and maybe Jason Robbins, um, but we are starting to see the rewards from DraftKings coming in and it's starting to get a little bit more love from Wall Street, which is really good to see. So yeah, I think it's had that cooling off phase from earnings and then um, that it seems like it's kind of put the bottom in there. So a uh, good day from DraftKings. But anyway, let's get on to the first one that was on this list, Mercado Libra. So it's having a 10% drop today. And what did I tell you guys on Monday? I made a video and I said, I think the earnings are going to be good. And hopefully it's a set of earnings where it's good, but also the stock goes down. And maybe it gives you that opportunity to buy a few more shares. And I tell you something, guys, it's happening. The stock is down 10% today. And I've got to say, the earnings were amazing. I think I've got to give them a, a 10 out of 10. If I don't give them a 10 out of 10, I'm going to give them a 9.5 for one reason only. And I'm going, like I said, I'm going to keep this nice and brief because I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on the Patreon video. But overall, fantastic numbers. Now, if you look at the EPS, they are not comparable because they had to take a charge, which was uh, to, to do with a tax payment in Brazil. Without that tax payment in Brazil, um, the EPS here that was expected to be $6.96 would have actually come in at $7.39. You know, that's a, that's a nice, it's like a 5% beat there. Very, very good on the EPS side of it. So yeah, it seems like, I don't know why the stock is dropping. I, I, I feel like it is off this EPS number and I don't know if it's just the, the computers and the algorithms picking up that EPS and going, oh, look, it was that miss and not realizing actually there's a one-time charge. If it wasn't for that charge, uh, we would have actually seen a very good beat on the EPS. So nothing to worry about that. From a revenue point of view as well, this confused me as well, to be fair, on Seeking Alpha. It said 42% year over year growth, uh, beat by 130 million. And when I actually saw the stock up uh, with 42% growth, I was like, wow, that's a mega beat. Because I was looking at the Yahoo Finance numbers on Monday, and you can go back and watch my video on Monday. And Yahoo Finance actually had Mercado Libra to grow 39% this quarter. So when I saw 42%, I was like, oh, that's, uh, that's absolutely amazing. And I was like, why does it only say beat by 130 million? Like this is a lot bigger beat than 130 million. And then I realized that Seeking Alpha must have had their targets for growth a lot higher. So, hey, I, I don't know what's going on there, but I thought that was a really good beat and uh, Seeking Alpha doesn't have it as, as, as much of a beat, but yeah, it's still 42% year over year growth is uh, very impressive. So yeah, good EPS beat without the charge in there and a good revenue beat. So um, I, I have no idea why the stock's going down today. I mean, it's not like it's even a crazy valuation because uh, yeah, 83, times earnings but you know you're getting 42 percent growth and you know on a 4p basis it's uh it's relatively low for a company that's growing the profitability and the revenue growth that it is and uh, the, the numbers that were inside the company were just absolutely scary i mean without the actual fx impact the growth was actually 82 percent year over year the payment growth just continues to be strong same again on an fx neutral basis it was 153 percent growth absolutely insane numbers from Mercado Libra. Like I said, it, it's a, a good, if it's not a 10 out of 10, it's a 9.5 out of 10 quarter. And um, I'm, I'm shocked to see the stock down today. And like I said, I think the reason why is because the algorithms maybe picked up that EPS miss and not realizing it wasn't a comparable EPS estimate. If it was and you take out the tax payment, 
that was in there it was a mega beat on the eps and i think maybe they're just not beating it up and it's good to see as well that some analysts are agreeing like it's not even like the analysts like we look at mikado libra today and barclays that have obviously just come out and actually uh, upgraded DraftKings as well today and um, barclays came out and they upgraded the price target and they upgraded it from i think it was 1900 to 2000 dollars so yeah I, I don't i don't actually know who's selling today because it was good numbers even analysts are coming out and upgrading. Like I said, I don't know if it's just the algorithms and bots that are just picking up that EPS miss because, yeah, it should have been up today. The, the stock should have been up 5 to 10% on those numbers and it's down 10%. So I said on Monday, I said, honestly, the, the thing that you want to see from Mikado Libra is fantastic earnings, which we did have 10 out of 10 earnings and the stock drops and I think that's a buying opportunity. So I won't tell you what I did today, but um, I think I've given you a good hint there what my actions were. <laughs> Next one was Fiverr. So five reported earnings, the stock actually had a bit of a whack off their earnings. It's down nearly 20% in the last five days. And I've got to say, Fiverr's numbers compared to Mercado Libra's numbers, I was just telling you how wonderful Mercado Libra's numbers were. Fiverr's numbers were a little bit disappointing, I'm not going to lie. I looked at the numbers and I was like, Ugh. now what was actually not disappointing was the quarter that they reported. The quarter that they reported was actually really good. The EPS was a beat. The, uh, the revenue did miss by uh, 1.05 million, but realistically, you know, what's that? One, one, two percent? So nothing too major. Grew at 10% growth. And like I said, for a company that's growing, uh, is it currently at 11 times forward earnings, growing 10% and uh, ramping up the profitability, the, the good numbers. Um, EBITDA was moving in the right direction as well. You know, this is the big focus now is the focus on profitability. And all the profitability metrics were moving in the right direction. The problem was the uh, the guidance with uh, Fiverr. We were expecting double digit growth from Fiverr and Fiverr came out and basically said, we're going to grow uh, five to seven percent year over year, which is okay, but we were expecting more towards double digit growth, and I was as well. So, uh, especially when you've just come off Q4 and you're growing 10%, you know, I, I expect it to be more towards double digit. So, a little bit below expectations. Adjusted EBITDA wise as well, I thought that might be in a little bit higher as well. Um, so, the guidance was a little bit lower than what was expected. And um, yeah, that's what took it down was the big thing was the guidance. And um, so, yeah, overall, I was disappointed. I kind of was expecting more. Um, but then what I did is I, I stepped back to when, you know what? Now that we've had another 20% drop in the stock, I've got to say, if Fiverr is to grow, let's just take the middle ground here, the midpoint, let's say 6% this year, and they do come in towards a 69 million on an EBITDA basis, you, when you're paying up um, 80, 882 million for this company, it's actually like priced it in now to grow, uh, grow at them rates. And I actually think at these levels with them growth rates, it's actually still okay. So it was a bit disappointing and I understand the drop here because I was disappointed in the guidance, but I've got to say, now that it's had that priced into the stock, I think it's definitely a, a reflecting that a, a fair valuation now. So yeah, disappointing earnings and not the growth that I wanted, but given the price and the valuation now and the figures they are putting out, if they do hit those figures, I actually think it's quite fairly priced for them figures. So yeah, overall five are disappointing numbers. Uh, I was disappointed with them, but I think the valuation can justify the numbers at the moment, which is uh, okay, I guess, really. Uh, the last one was Block. So Block is having a cracking day. It's up 17%, absolutely insane. And like we've said before, like, Fintech, Fintech has no love at the moment. You know, PayPal bring out their earnings, not loved. SoFi bring out their earnings, they weren't loved. I'm thinking Block, they're gonna bring out their earnings. Fintech is just not liked at the moment and uh, the stock goes absolutely crazy. Like, I, I, I was so surprised to see Block up this much. And looking at the numbers, I thought they were okay. I, I, uh, I didn't think they were like an 18% jump in the stock, to be honest with you. I thought they were okay, but um, I was surprised to see FinTech getting this love. Um, EPS was a pretty decent miss, <laughs> but the growth was good. Um, they grew at 24% year over year. It was just a slight beat though. Um, so the numbers were like okay. And um, the big thing I always say is the subscription service-based revenue. That's what you've got to look at with Square. That's uh, the major growth driver, I've said for many years, and that's also gonna drive the profitability up because the, the gross profit they make on the, serv the subscription service-based revenue is insane. I think it's like 80 or 90%. So if that keeps growing really well, that's gonna lead the profitability to grow very well. And you can see gross profit was up 27% year over year. And then that's what got the stock excited. And the shareholders really liked is uh, the, the, the talk about profitability. 
Um, they came in with a lot higher estimates than what Wall Street were expecting from a profitability point of view. Uh, you can see here they're expecting at least 2.6 billion in EBITDA versus the 2.4 billion that was expected. So Wall Street was like, hey, that's 10% higher than what we were expecting. We like that and the stock went up. So that's really what Square and Block was moving on was the guidance. And obviously that's helped by the subscription growth. There's been a few of things that have moved in the way as well, like you know the, the likes of Bitcoin has been moving in the right, right direction and obviously Square have good ties to Bitcoin. I've always wanted to keep Square in the portfolio because of that. I, I'm not a big crypto fan, but at least I get some exposure with uh, Square in there, or Block should I say. I'm still too used to saying Square. Seem a lot more efficient as well now. They talk about Jack Dorsey, um, mentioning efficiency a lot, and obviously Wall Street like that word. AI, I've got to say, I've. By the way, I've listened to a lot of conference calls this week and AI, jeez, I've heard AI mentioned so many times in conference calls. I'm like, I'm staring at DraftKings going, come on guys, you've got to start mentioning AI at this point. You know, you're the only ones missing out here. So yeah, absolutely crazy the mentions of AI there. But yeah, overall, I think that the growth was good. Wall Street liked the profitability side of it. I guess if it's going to be at 22 times forward earnings and it's going to grow high double digits or mid double, um, mid you know 14 15 percent growth uh, going forward and it's going to focus a lot more profitability i guess the valuation isn't too bad um but yeah i was quite surprised to see block move up this much i i, I expected maybe a, you know obviously when you're hiking up the profitability i expected maybe a, a, you know a good five percent maybe up to ten percent jump in the share price but uh 18 percent uh, yeah that definitely did shock me overall so yeah those are the free stocks that i have reported and uh free stocks i own as well um so let me know what you think about DraftKings at the moment let me know what you think about Mercado libra at the moment let me know what you think about fiverr are you buying fiverr on the dip and let me know what you think about block do you think those earnings deserved an 18 percent jump apart from that have a fantastic weekend unless you're on the patreon i'll see you on either saturday or sunday with two exclusive videos and if you aren't on the patreon i'll see you on monday guys see you in a bit